So I was wondering, in some of your earlier recordings, you talk about going to the workshop, going about my day, seeing things I want, making notes of those things I want, and then bringing it back to my workshop. And Visualization. Yeah, and then manifesting that in my workshop every day. But then you have the meditation piece, which is like spend 15 minutes meditating, breathing, three breaths, five breaths out. You know, you're always like, you don't need to do too much of it. Too much of it is, a, you know, not a good thing. So what should I be doing? Should I be doing the workshop or should I be doing the meditation? Well, what you described here were step three first and step one. In other words, the meditation is putting yourself in the place of allowing what you've asked for to be realized by you. Because if you're not offering contradictory thought, your vibration will raise and then you will realize then thoughts will come and impulses will come. The visualization is really helpful when you are in alignment with your desire. So it's a really good question, and we're going to explain it to you here so you'll know exactly what to do. Let's begin here. Every subject is really two subjects, wanted and absence of what is wanted. And you are in the vicinity of one or the other, usually. When you want something and you are in vibrational alignment with what you want, then the more detail you give to it, the more you think about it, the more good feeling thoughts you have about it, then the more you practice the vibration that allows it to flow into your experience. It's what expectancy is. Expectation is a powerful state of being because it means that what you want and what you believe are in the same place. Let's clarify, positive expectation is that. You could negatively expect something too, which is what you don't want and what you believe. So expectation is really a sort of defining of what your point of attraction is in any moment in time. So let's say that you want something and you've wanted it for a while. And you're not seeing the evidence of it coming about and you're becoming discouraged because you're noticing the absence of it more than you're noticing the presence of it. Well, under those conditions, we would not encourage you to go to a workshop and try to imagine it because you've already got contradictory energy going on. So any thought you think about it is going to add to the it isn't working more than it's going to add to the it is working. So if you want something that you doubt, meditation is a better tool for you because in the absence of thought, your vibration will raise. But let's say you want something, you've been wanting it for a while, and you've been tuned in, you're feeling good, and an idea occurs to you. When that idea occurs to you, we would milk it for all it's worth. In other words, when you get that idea and you say, I've got a great idea, we would sit, we would sketch it, we would draw it, we would think about it, we would even talk about it with others. We would get the energy of that moving. So what we're really talking about is momentum. you got to know in which direction the momentum is going. If the momentum is going toward what you want, then be more descriptive. If the momentum is going away from what you want, then shut it down, take a nap, go to sleep, meditate. Clear? Clear. That's a great question because I'm about to buy a vehicle and I've been thinking about this vehicle. I sit on the rowing machine at the gym every day and I visualize, actualize, and it's this close. I can taste it, but the money's not there in the bank, so I think I pinch myself off. I'm in the momentum. Is it okay to expect that that's going to take care yes. of itself? Yes, it is. In fact, that is the exact thing to do. But let's talk about this for a minute. When you want something that you do not believe that you have the means to, what does that feel like? It feels like discouragement. It feels like tension. It feels like stress. So if you keep being on your rowing machine and you keep thinking about it and the stress gets bigger, then what you're doing is not helping would be better for you to sort of back off from it a little bit. But this is the piece that we really want you to hear. Oh, I so want you to hear this. Because everything that everyone wants, no matter what it is, a material object or a state of being or a pile of money or a relationship, a circumstance or an event, everything that everybody wants is because they believe they would feel better in the having of it. So we don't want the full manifestation of that vehicle to be necessary in order for you to feel good. Now, we know when you get it, you're going to really feel happy. But we want that happiness to just feel like the next logical step, not bouncing off the wall or oh, a miracle has happened. Can you feel what we're getting at? So do you believe that what we said about sifting and sorting, you said you've been thinking about this for a long while, 
Every time you drive a vehicle that doesn't please you, you launch part of one that does. Every time something is not wanted, what is wanted goes into this vibrational reality. So do you believe that there is a vibrational version already in existence, you and that new vehicle already in existence? Not very satisfying because you can't drive it yet, but do you accept that there is a vibrational reality already there? Absolutely. So, since you accept that there is a vibrational reality already there, then the source is there with you with this. In other words, it's a vibrational reality that already exists. And source is calling you on this path of least resistance to the full realization of it. So what's the first thing that's going to happen? Ideas about it, your clarification about it, the emotion about it. And when that emotion that you feel about it feels exciting, when it is exhilarating to you to think about it, that means that the manifestation is well underway because it's a very short distance from that vibrational state of being where you're joyful, even in the absence of it. It fills in almost immediately under those conditions. But most people don't allow themselves to be in that joyful state unless it has already happened. In other words, they want to see it before they feel like this. So that brings us to the most important discussion that we will ever have with any of you, which is unconditional joy, unconditional positive expectation, unconditional. The vehicle isn't there yet, but the joy about it is. Because when the joy about something is there, it has to morph into the full realization of it. It is illogical. It cannot not be. But you can't be discouraged and go there. You can't be disappointed and get there. You see what we're talking about? you got to find the vibration first. Now we know. There are so many things that you do relative to your action. And so it feels like, well, if I could just work more, if I could just make more money, if I could just find some way. And yes, we're not saying that all of those things won't be part of the process that will bring you to what you're wanting. We're just saying you can't get there from discouragement, but you can get there from joy. So... The answer to your question is, if it turns you on and lights you up to think about it, then do all of that that you can. But do it for the lighting up, not because you need the vehicle. That's the piece that we so much want you to hear. If you're imagining it and feeling good, that's success. But so often you say, you have this ulterior motive. Okay, I'll do that so that I can get that. And if that's the motive, then since you haven't got that, then this gets old. But if you're doing this, if you're finding the thought of it, because it thrills you to find the thought of it, if it feels good to think about it. I'm afraid it's giving me more joy thinking about it than actually doing it. Well, here's the thing. If something is giving you joy, it's coming. But if you're afraid, it's not. So we don't believe that you're afraid of it coming. And we don't believe that you are really afraid that, well, we see what you mean. <laughs> Sometimes you do think that. You think, oh, Abraham, you don't really mean to lead me to my vehicle. You just want to lead me to happiness. That's so tricky. <laughs> and we say, yeah, because when you get to happiness, all the manifestations that represent that have to flow into your experience. But if you need the manifestation to get to happy, that's a conditional love that's backwards, and that's what slows you down. You got that, didn't you? So don't think about it so much. Don't think about it so much. Don't think about it so much. Just think about it when it occurs to you. Because if you let it occur to you, it's occurring to you in your state of alignment. And in your state of alignment, there's a progression that's happening. So this goes to your first question. Don't try so hard. Don't try to script it into being. Just allow it into being. Can you feel the difference? Can you feel the difference between demanding it and just allowing it? Don't try so hard. So don't overthink it. Just let it, only let it come when it Care about how you feel. Care about how you feel mostly. So let's do some of that now. Let's demonstrate what we are talking about. So what's the feeling of this vehicle? What's it feel like? Adventure. Adventure? Freedom. Is it hardy? It's playful. Does it get off-road? Yes. Is it nimble? Yes. Does it take you to high-flying places? Yes. Is it stable? Yes. And secure? Yes. And frisky? <laughs> yes. Does it feel sure and solid 
and certain and invincible. Absolutely. Does it feel open-ended? Does it feel like possibilities? Does it feel like new places and new things? Ooh. Doesn't it feel good to feel all of those things? Doesn't it feel good to be the feeler of that, which is the bringer of a manifestation that fulfills that? Can you feel that? In other words, you used your image of it to conjure emotions, but the emotion is what's going to bring the manifestation. That's getting the horse in front of the cart, so to speak. In other words, that's getting things in the proper vibrational proximity to one another. So does it feel difficult? No, not at the same time that it feels frisky. So do you ever feel the absence of it? E no. That's good. Do you ever feel the slowness of it manifesting? I mean, it's, it's manifested in my mind so quickly, there's no slowness to it. So when you say, I'm almost afraid, so that little feeling of discomfort that sometimes comes is mild, but you can morph that or shift that by remembering how nimble it is, by remembering how robust it is, by remembering how solid it is, by remembering how secure it is, by remembering how good it feels, by thinking about how it smells. So now you're really scripting. Now you're seeing yourself in it. Now you're really feeling it. Now that's really positive, strong momentum. In other words, a conversation like this took you away from the idea and the emotion into something, 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 something. So when does a thought turn to a thing? When does that happen? But we know you've got to be wondering, Abraham, how long do I got to do this crap? And we say, really? This that feels so good, you're putting a time limit on it? Because if you're putting a time limit on how long you got to do this before you get to this, then you're not really doing this the way we're encouraging you to do this. Can you feel what we're talking about? If we can convince you that getting yourself feeling this will lead so swiftly to that, but you got to find a way to this. And almost no one really finds their way to that. Because this is shrouded in doubt and timetables and how long and sacrifices. So you got to get purely to this. And we get purely to this, as you really did in this discussion, then it's very quick, very quick. It's so fun when you come to understand the power of your alignment. So, life caused you to create a vibrational reality. A vibrational reality that is so real that it's realer, it's bigger, it's better, it's fuller than the reality that you're living and it's current tense. You've got to find a way to feel it, to know it, and then it's going to manifest. So, let's look at this in another way. We'll be very brief about this. After the fact, after a manifestation occurs, it's easier to trace your steps back to the way you felt. Are there things in your life that have manifested and you realize that you were doing that, and that's what brought that about. So spend time thinking about those things. Make lists of things that you appreciate that have already manifested. It's an odd conversation we're having here. Because on the one hand, we don't want you to want manifestations because they hang you up. But on the other hand, we want you to find alignment, which means the manifestations will be inevitable. On the one hand, you are spirit in physical bodies. On the other hand, you've come into this environment to manifest materially. That's why you're in this leading edge environment. It's supposed to manifest into these wonderful material things, you see. We just want you to discover the unconditional alignment that feels so good. So some are afraid that they'll find that unconditional alignment and that the things won't matter and they don't want the things to not matter because they want the things. And we say, don't worry about it. You're not ever going to get here without getting here. It's not one or the other. But if you try to get here before you get here, it slows it way down and then you get discouraged and then you doubt yourself, you doubt the process, you doubt your worthiness, you doubt instead of believe. This was the best discussion on manifestation we've ever had. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next